There's been a lot of buzz lately about the Pocophone F1. It is a Xiaomi sub-brand that's doing really well. It offers a lot for that price. You've got a Snapdragon 845 sensor, a beautiful display, really comfortable, elegant body. But we really don't know about the camera. It's kind of middling. Uh, I don't know about you, but for me, what makes or breaks a good phone is a very good camera, whether I'll spend $300 for the Poco phone or splurge on something like a Pixel or a Note 9 has a lot to do with its optics. So since we're here in beautiful Berlin on this beautiful cloudy day, and since we at Engadget love testing out cameras while we're traveling overseas, let's take a look at what sort of camera quality we're getting out of a $300 smartphone. Let's quickly go over the basics here. On the front, we have a 20 megapixel selfie camera, which offers things like portrait mode and HDR. But on the back, you have what Pocophone is calling a dual smart camera system. Uh, let's get to the smart part in a bit because it's really not that smart. Um, you have a 12 megapixel color sensor with an aperture of f1.9 paired with a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Neither of these has optical image stabilization, so we'll have to see how video quality uh, performs later on. But with these two cameras, you'll get artificial depth of field effects as well as other AI features that we'll take a closer look at in a bit. So let's start with the very basic we are taking a photo without the AI, without any other enhancements, and it looks all right. But let's see how good the AI holds up here. Now, if you'll remember, the AI camera is a feature that Huawei introduced with its flagship phones, and then LG and Samsung also followed suit. So now that Pocophone is throwing its own offering into the mix, it's interesting to see if a $300 AI is better at all than those high-end flagships. All right, let's point this at the concert house in Berlin and see. So it's recognized that we're looking at a building, very good. And then it bumped up, very obviously now bumped up the contrast and saturation. Uh, but it looks like the phone is having trouble staying on what it recognized, by the way. It keeps going in and out. It's great because it's making the effects clearer, but not so good if you're possibly going to miss your shot with the AI effects on. Another thing this high contrast does is you might lose some information because of that bumped up contrast. Let's try the AI on human subjects. It sees Brian. It's still trying to find Brian at this point though. Um, but it can't because there's kind of maybe a lot of people going on. Maybe Brian, you might need to step closer. Okay, it's recognized. At first it recognized buildings, then now it's got humans, and it seemed to have bumped up the brightness of the picture and maybe some saturation. Brian, if you step a little closer, can we see if we get any sort of depth of field effect? All right. And let me turn it off and on. So no, no depth of field effect. However, if you want to achieve that, I think you can just go over to portrait mode, which does it quite nicely. It's kicking in with the uh, 5 megapixel depth camera clearly right now. So, you know what? You might not want to rely on the AI so much. I'm very thankful actually that the Poco phone makes it very easy to just switch on and off the AI camera, mostly because the AI camera just doesn't seem to be all that smart or effective. But then there's other things you can just toggle on and off, like HDR, it's just right there. You have filters, you have flash. Similarly, the manual uh, mode is also relatively easy to use. You have all the options you need to toggle, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance. So very easy to use. Another thing I want to test is the low light mode on this camera. And you know, it's really bright out here, but we found this sexy little alley that we can show you. So let's check it out. We found a darker spot and I'm surprised it's actually doing quite okay. I mean, there is a significant amount of detail in these pictures along with a fair amount of noise. It's even actually brighter in the phone than to my eye. So I'm not generally very fond of 20 megapixel selfie cameras because there's just too much detail it captures sometimes. We don't need our faces to look all that sharp. Thankfully, Xiaomi has integrated some beautifying software that is relatively subtle into this front camera. Uh, another nice touch is you can do portrait mode on the front camera as well. 
and thanks to that sharpness, it is quite accurate at identifying your outline and applying that to the background behind you, so you get pretty lovely pictures. So we're going to try out the video function here and see how smooth it can be. Now, like I said before, no optical image stabilization on either of the lenses, but there is image stabilization, presumably digital. We're seeing relatively clear quality, even though the building is backlit. This is recording in 1080p. That's pretty nice. Interestingly enough, there is a short video mode over here, which I at first thought was a boomerang style thing that records like short animated clips. But what it is really is a preset 10 second recording feature, you know, that helps you take clips perfect for Instagram or your Snapchat stories or whatnot. One thing that's not entirely camera related, but still it hampers the imaging experience here is the Pocophone's screen. It's really not bright enough for me to see under the light out here, even on this cloudy day. Uh, so I can't really judge how good the pictures look. Uh, I'm getting glare in the way I can't really see all of the details in the picture. So that's something to bear in mind when using a $300 smartphone and its camera. After putting the Pocophone F1 through my quick little tourist test here in Berlin, I, I can say that it's basically what you paid for. I mean, the smart AI feature is really not that smart. It's like hiring an usher at your wedding that's just good at recognizing people, but then just not doing anything with them. A lot of the tweaks that the AI feature did just weren't very obvious or useful at all. The other thing is the screen. It just really isn't bright enough for you to see how your pictures came out or even for framing them in bright situations. This really isn't the phone for someone who's anal about their photography wherever they go. So you might want to lower your expectations. Don't expect pixel, don't expect a note type of camera here. This is a $300 phone. For all of the details on the Pocophone F1, check out our full review and stay tuned for all of the information out of EVA 2018, which is what we're here for, on Engadget.com.